pulling up at Darlington Raceway now. This is the first time in the last three years I've sat on a stock wheelbase bike. So I'm anxious and a little, and a little, a little nervous, but I'll get over it. So anyway, we're pulling up to Darlington. Let's see what we do. So what's up, y'all? So today we're in the garage. We get, ready, we get ready to install our Brock's Clutch Mod. Because when you have a brand new ZX-14, you have any bike you need to modify the clutch for drag racing. Now, let me get the socket that I need. So just so you know, when you go, when you get to this part here to put in the clutch mod, to get, you want to get rid of these fingers. That's what you're trying to get rid of, all right? This is a 27 millimeter, all right? So generally, you would have to hold this basket in place, but if you put the bike in gear, that's a trick to doing it too. Put the bike in gear, and then that won't spin. All you literally have to do Let's take these fingers off, take these off, and you trash them as far as I'm concerned. And then you put the Brock spacer on with the name facing you. All right, seat it there, put your nut in there, like here and that, that. Make sure that it's seated properly around the nut, around the shoulder of the nut. And then now you put your, put that back in, that's your plunger for your hydraulic clutch. And then you put the needle bearing, make sure you put the needle bearing on the outside of that. And then also there is a flat washer. 
That goes on top of the needle bearing. Make sure that's there. And now you put your, put that back on. All right. There we go. This is the stock springs that came out of it, okay? The only thing you will be using from the stock setup are the bolts. Now, you have your springs, your spacers, and your collars, all right? And that will go in in that order, and you'll generally put this in like that. But these springs, if you notice, these springs are narrower than the factory springs. Can you see that? They're smaller. That's why Brock has these spacers here, these shims, so that they don't slide inside the hole. Because they will cock and go inside that hole and you'll be in trouble. Your clutch will be slipping. You'll burn up a clutch, whatever. You get that on there. We'll put our spacers on there or shims on each one. And do me a favor, don't do what I'm doing <laughs> because you should have a rag in here so that you don't drop anything. If you drop one of these shims and it slides down in the motor, you got problems. You got to drop the oil pan and everything. So don't do as I do. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I just been doing it a long time. I feel like shit can't happen to me, even though it has. Even though it has. That's the dumbness. <laughs> you're supposed to, when you're putting these on, you're supposed to start these by hand. Um, I never do. I have a... I feel like I have the touch for it. But that's not true. I've had, I've fucked up before, so. You think I would learn from my mistakes, right? And make sure, because one of the reasons why you don't want to do this is because you want to make sure you have the right torque on these springs. Um, and not over torque it to strip the, strip the, uh, the hole. But I pretty much know the torque that's on this gun, so. Again, I'll go over it by hand after I'm done. Alright, so that's that. Take and check these by hand. Alright, so anyway, that's done. All you gotta do is put your clutch cover back on. Alright, y'all, we're in the shop again today. And today we're going to see how much a stock tire weighs, a ZX14 stock tire and a race tire, a Dunlop Q4 tire. So we're gonna put the, the uh, stock tire on here first. See where we at? 36.3 pounds. And the wheels have exactly the same disc on them, sprockets, everything. And then we're gonna take this one with the Dunlop Thirty-two pounds. Again, they both have the same everything on them. So you're looking at four and a half pounds just in the tire alone. So again, this is for our super stock bike. We're just trying to see how we can get more power. All right, so here we go. We're going to weigh the tire itself, a stock tire uh, that comes on the ZX14. Going to weigh the tire itself. Fourteen point six pounds, and then we're gonna weigh the Dunlop. Eleven point nine pounds. That is <laughs> that right there is two point six pounds difference. That's crazy. Two point seven pounds difference. So 
So we're trying to get rid of some weight today on our super stock bike, on our 2023 Kawasaki ZX14 super stock bike. And one of the easiest ways to get rid of weight is to get rid of this, I would guess, eight to nine pound battery. Let's throw it on a scale and see what she weighs. And then uh, we'll put the replacement and you'll see what that is in a minute. We got some goodies. Thank you, anti gravity. Ooh, we got even got a hoodie. That's what's up. But this is the best right here. Oh, shit. Look at this. One of the easiest ways to get rid of weight on the factory bikes is to get rid of this heavy ass battery. This is the factory battery, which I assume probably weighs about nine or 10 pounds. We're gonna throw it on the scale and see what the difference is between that battery and this new interstate battery, anti-gravity, I'm sorry, not interstate, anti-gravity battery. Pulling this heavy ass ugh, factory battery out of my 2023 ZX14 super stock bike to replace it with the anti-gravity battery. Oh damn, this is like paper. Shit, is this real? Is anything, hello, is anybody home? Is anybody, is anything in this? Shit, let's put it on the scale and see what it was. What do you guys think is the difference between a factory battery, the big old thing, and that little battery that will fire the same motorcycle quicker, faster, and put out more amperage. What do you think the difference in the weight is? Two pounds, four pounds, what? All right, let's get down to it. Let's put both of these batteries on the scale right behind each other. 10.5 for the factory battery. And then 3.2 pounds for the anti-gravity battery. So that literally meant our super stock bike just lost an area of seven pounds. Like, just like that, with an anti-gravity an anti battery. So if y'all wanna lose some weight, it's the way to do it. So today we back in the shop, trying to get some more things accomplished on our super stock bike. Um, we've done other testing with the exhaust pipes and tuning. Today we are going to uh, put Superbike Mike's stacks on the on the ZX14 and see just how much power we can get out of it because I was I, Sometimes you don't see the power gains when you're Sitting when it's static then of course eventually we'll test it on the racetrack. So let's get after it So real quick, I just want to show you I got two of them out These are the factory stacks and they're staggered. So it's your outside cylinder your inside cylinder um, the inside cylinder has a taller rubber stack on it, but that's what it looks like out of the bike. Um, that's what it looks like in the bike. You can see it's taller than the outside one. So uh, the Superbike Mike stacks are all the same size. So this is what it looks like with the Superbike Mike stacks, aluminum velocity stacks installed on my 2023 ZX14. So as you can see, that they are all flat. They sit flat to the floor of the air box. Whereas though before, the factory stacks look like this. So, well, it's time to get back at it. Tomorrow night this time, we'll be at the XDA race in Maryland International Raceway. And it'll be my first time back on a super stock bike. Damn, it matches the Ram too. Um, my first time back on a stock wheelbase bike. Um, wish me luck. And your 2023 DME Racing Real Street Champion, Ricky Gadsden. <laughs> who also just went 201 in Real Street. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Get the track ready.
Oh, we just went 885, 161. I guess the old guy still got it. Round one is in the books. We're going up for round two soon. Wish me luck. So, as y'all know, I've been testing the Vicon pipe on the ZX-14. I'm the only one out here with a Vicon pipe, and we just ran 885 at 161.97, and this is the man, Brad Anassis, from South Africa that owns Vicon that I've been working with on developing the, at 161, yeah, 161 mile an hour that I'm working with right now to try to get this pipe in the U.S. and get it distributed for every bike, GSXRs, uh, Kawasaki's, everything. Brad, what? how long you been making a pipe for the 14? Is this the, is this the first time you made pipes for 14? Because I know you're in the road racing. Yeah, this is the first pipe, um, Ricky, and thank you for running the pipe uh, and working with us here and developing it for the U.S. market. It's been seriously challenging getting here, setting up a base and starting and you are a go-to gun a hot gun, hot shit as you called it, and put Vicon on your bike and the results will speak for themselves. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. So everybody's walking over to the, to the tent right now. People are recognizing that you got Vicon on and then they're recognizing that my, my YouTube stuff and now they're starting to believe, but I'm, I'm excited. Thank you for what you're doing. And we got some more work to do. We got to get some sure. more ground clearance with the pipe. We're gonna make a couple more changes. I'm running the shorty megaphone. Y'all seen me test the XS. That's the uh, the shortest muffler, and I told y'all that uh, that one made more power than the 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 longer uh, one, the, the longer muffler. So we're still developing pipes, but thank you, Brad, for uh, for being here with me today at the first race. We just went the fastest I ever went on a, on a yeah. super stock bike. Yeah. It's been interesting watching you go faster, faster, faster with us changing a little bit of setup, and uh, and everything's working on this Kawasaki ZX40. Well, let's see how far we can go today. Thanks, yeah. Brad. What's up, y'all? Hey, so I thought today would be a good day to talk about dyno numbers. You know, in drag racing, in racing period, you know, we measure our performance num our performance on the track, or at least the possibility of the performance that our, our bike, our car would would perform at by by looking at dyno numbers, looking at how much horsepower it makes on the dyno. Well, there's a lot of variables to dyno numbers. Like, you know, everybody wants to think that my bike made this much horsepower, you know, um, my bike's gonna be faster than, you know, people race each other by dyno figures, dyno numbers. But that is not necessary, that is not the end all be all. It is racetrack performance that, it is real world tuning on the racetrack that determines what goes fast and what doesn't. So for example, my super stock bike. Um, I'm hearing people in, in the super stock class are making 215, 218, 220, like those are crazy numbers because I feel like my dyno reads low and different dynos read differently depending on the weather, depending on the correction factors. Um, there's a lot of different reasons why, but just depending on the dyno. So I feel like I got a stingy dyno, which means that my dyno doesn't put out big numbers. So to prove that, my bike, just my super stock bike made 211 horsepower before I left to go to my rock for the first XDA opener. 
211 horsepower would still say that I'm behind the eight ball on horsepower. All right. Um, but am I behind the eight ball? Because my bike went 885 at 161 and change. So it's time to see. It's time to basically I'm going to go to the shop now and put the bike on the dyno and see how much horsepower does it take to go 880s in super stock. How much do y'all think? So this right here, I, I think this is real interesting. So I'm going to show y'all something I just learned. All right. Here's what the bike made post 885, 161. So how much horsepower does it take to go 885 at 161? 206 horsepower. The most important thing is to tune a motorcycle um, real world tuning. All right. So real world tuning means going down the racetrack with Ram air at 160 miles an hour. What is my air fuel ratio? So my, on, on my Woolwich, it says 12.9. Just to let y'all know, this is very interesting stuff. Once you come from the racetrack, everybody thinks that that dyno numbers are, are, are the end all be all, like I said, and they're not. All right. So if somebody tells you you got 218 horsepower, you know, you all happy, or if somebody tells you you only have 205 horsepower, and you listen to everybody else say, yeah, I got 210, I got 212. Mine makes 206, and went 885. Yep, 
So I know that's not the super stock, but we're on our way to the racetrack to test the super stock in uh, Cecil County, Maryland. So we picked up a, a Yamaha Venture uh, Transcontinental. That's uh, wife we sold our Harley and I promised her that we would get us a cruiser. So we picked up a cruiser. And then we're gonna go tonight, test the bike, and hopefully see if we can get back in the 880s. Right, babe? <laughs> <laughs> County Dragway in Maryland. Yo, I haven't been here in like five years. I used to live up this way, so this was this is a good place. I heard the track's been redone, so can't wait to actually get on it. But me and my boy Felton Goodwin and Terry Geezy and, and Tim, all of us are up here testing our super stock bike, and I'm excited. I want to see how fast this motherfucker gonna go tonight. You looking tight? Let's see. wondering why I could feel it vibrating going down the racetrack. It was like shaking and it was hitting, it was rubbing underneath my my undertail the whole time. So I gotta make some adjustments to the suspension and we're going back out. 902, 156. Um, and I could feel it rubbing going down the racetrack.
so nice. <laughs> So this is the day after we came from um, we came from Cecil County Dragway to test the super stock bike, and it went good yesterday. The, the last pass last night didn't go so good. Um, uh, they, they were supposed to give us a pro light, and they ended up with a full tree coming down. So my buddy Felton jumped the light. I sat there and was confused about what to do. Then when I left, the damn thing I, it, it just messed up the run, and then it got hung up in second gear, wouldn't go to third gear. So. I just trashed a run. But anyway, we learned a lot yesterday with the suspension. I need to stiffen up the shock a little bit more because it keeps rubbing underneath the undertail, which is slowing me down. That's why I think my mile an hour is off. Only went 157, almost 158 last night at 893. But I felt it hitting going down the track. The bike was shaking going down the track. So anyway, I think I'm right where I need to be at. I went a 15060 foot once again like that's big for me i haven't been on a super stock bike in years and this is only like i probably got not even 10 passes on this bike yet so a 150 y'all know that's good and we coming for you super stock so and just so you know i can do everything through the ecu but the power commander makes it a lot easier a lot faster to tune at the racetrack because we don't always have Wi-Fi, and on the new bikes, you need Wi-Fi to uh, uh, to upload your stuff to the Woolwich. So, Power Commander just makes it a lot quicker. I have a zero map in there right now. If I need fuel, like I did the other night, I withdrew fuel just through the Power Commander. It takes like 30 seconds as opposed to your computer going dead or you doing something and losing signal and wiping out your ECU while you're at the racetrack. All right. Peace out. Like and subscribe. I'll see y'all later.